In our very first module, I introduced the machine learning landscape, which consists of several different learning paradigms. As mentioned, we will primarily focus on supervised learning in this course, while also having one module deal with unsupervised learning. But before we can go much into technical details about the different algorithms and how they work, we need to introduce a bunch of fundamental concepts of machine learning. Thus, this module will cover the most important concepts that you will need throughout the rest of this course. I will give you an introduction to supervised and unsupervised learning and continue by giving you insights into risk, generalization and the idea of regularization. Okay, to start things off, you will get a more in-depth introduction to the supervised learning paradigm. Let's recap what we discussed in module 1. We used the metaphor of a class of school to describe supervised learning, where your teacher presents you a set of pictures and tells you what you can see on them. Afterwards, your teacher wants you to look at new pictures and correctly classify them. One very important concept in this is that your teacher gives you all the information of the pictures you were shown first. As heard in the previous module, where we talk about data, we can consider data points with labels. In this example, the pictures are the data points, whereas the type of animal that is shown on the picture is the respective label. For supervised learning, it is crucial that you have a dataset which includes the labels for all the data points. They are not only important for learning, but also for evaluating your machine learning model. But first, let's introduce some notation for this problem. When we talk about a dataset, we usually use a small x to denote individual data points, whereas a capital X denotes the complete set of points, our dataset. As you have heard now already multiple times, each data point also comes with a label. We will denote the label for a given data point with a lowercase y, whereas a capital Y denotes the full set of labels. This leads us to our dataset, which we can now characterize using capital X for the main data, which in our example would be the collection of pictures and capital Y for the respective labels, which in our example are presented verbally to you by your teacher. We will also denote individual pairs of X and Y using Z and capital Z as the collection of them, which basically is our complete data. Now, the data points can be of any form, text, pictures, audio, or simply a vector of numeric values coming from a table. Labels usually are given as true and false, or 0 and 1, or described as text such as bird, dog and cat. We also already have heard quite a bit about training a model, which includes two words that might not be entirely clear to you. Firstly, model. A model can be seen as an instantiation of a given algorithm applied to a given dataset. The learnable parameters of your model are denoted by theta. Most of the algorithms come with a set of hyperparameters. Those hyperparameters are typically used to tune your algorithm and its performance, but more on this in module 4. A model in supervised learning can be also be seen as a function, which we will denote by g. This function then expects x as input and returns a corresponding predicted label, which usually is denoted by y hat. Now for the word training. This word describes the procedure of finding a function which returns as good as possible predictions by using a given dataset and its labels. The training procedure itself differs from algorithm to algorithm. With this being said, let's summarize supervised learning. We want to train a model or function g on a given data set consisting of data points x and labels y, such that it will provide us with good predictions on new unseen data. The learning procedure is called supervised, as the algorithm makes use of the available labels of the given data points. Supervised learning entails many different algorithms. In this course, I will introduce you to some methods in the setting of classification and regression. The example of naming pictures of animal correctly is classification. 
In this task setting, we aim at predicting discrete labels of our data sets, as for example animal species. This can be done in a binary setting, where there only exist two labels, such as true and false, answering for each animal the question whether it appears in the given image. But we can also have more than just two labels. This is called multi-label classification, where you have to choose between a number of different labels, like all categories of animals. Regression, on the other hand, tries to predict labels on a continuous numeric scale. A typical example for this would be the price changes of buying a house over the course of the years, or predicting the salary a person makes based on their job description. Before we dig deeper into the topic and talk about terms such as supervised learning, risk and generalization, I want to briefly talk about the binary versus multi-label classification in the next video.